I have a problem in my yard. I have a few uneven spots here and there where irrigation trenches have settled a little bit. And I want to go over with you seven mistakes I see homeowners make when they're trying to level their yard. Hey, I'm Dr. Tom Warren and you're watching The Plant Doctor. Let's get started. The first mistake I see homeowners make is failing to lower the height of their cut before they top dress their yard to get out those uneven spots. What you want to do is lower the deck of your mower. If you're mowing it like two inches, you want to take that down to like an inch and a half or even all the way down to one inch. You almost want to scalp the yard. This is going to allow that sand to penetrate down to the soil layer where you can get a rake on it and rake it back and forth. Earlier today, I mowed this yard down lower than I normally do. I usually mow it about two, two and a half inches. Today we mowed it down to one and a half inches. That is as low as my mower deck will go and that's how low we cut this yard today. The second mistake I see homeowners make is the textured sand that they use in their yard. You do not want a real rocky sand when you do this. You want a masonry sand. You want something that's really fine and dusty. What's going to happen is if you get a sand mixture with a lot of rocks in it, those rocks tend to stay on top of the grass. They do not go down into the grass and level out the soil at all. And especially if you're mowing with a real mower, it's gonna mess your reels up. If you're mowing with a rotary mower, your, your blades are gonna pick those rocks up and you're gonna shoot them out to your side chute. Just not a good idea. Get masonry sand, go to your local concrete supply store and get the sand that they have there. The third mistake I see people make is not having the correct equipment to do the job. What you need for this job, you need a sturdy wheelbarrow. This is a metal wheelbarrow, or you need something like a Gorilla cart. I'll leave a link down in the description below for both of those products. Also, you need something to rake in those sand to get it level for these small holes like I have here in front of me. Something like an industrial push broom will work, or if you have a steel kind rake, you can turn it upside down and use the flat side to run it in back and forth. For larger jobs, if you're doing the entire yard, you want something that's called a leveling rake. You also need a sturdy shovel. So what I have here is a square point shovel. I prefer to use the square point shovel as opposed to the round point because these little sand mounds that I have here, initially I can just take that square point and run it right over the top of that low spot. And then, then I can come back over with the broom. The fourth mistake I see is the time of year in which people level. So this is zoysia grass. This video is mainly for zoysia and Bermuda lawns. Those warm season turfs. You do not want to do this going into dormancy or during dormancy. Do this while the grass is actively growing. So I'm doing this in late August. I've still got all of September, all of October, and here where I'm at, my grass is not going to go dormant really till the first part of November. So within a couple weeks, the sand where we filled in, the grass is going to come up and through it. In two or three weeks, you're not going to be able to tell the difference. If you do this in December, January, February time frame, what you're going to see happen is that sand is just going to sit there and it's unsightly throughout the year. And it does lead to potential for maybe some pathogens to get in where you're holding moisture underneath that sand. And so you could have some bacteria or fungal issues, especially with some zoysia turf. A fifth mistake that I see oftentimes is people using wet sand. Wet sand is going to clump up on you. It's not going to level out near as nice if that sand is really, really dry. So if you have a pile of sand and you're wanting to put some sand out in your yard to level with, make sure it's really dry. Make sure that it hadn't been rained on in three or four or five days. Take your shovel, turn that sand over to the middle of the pile and make sure that the middle is dry as well. If you do that, it's gonna make your life a whole lot easier. That sand's gonna go out nice and smooth. The sixth thing that I see, and it's not really a mistake, it's more of what is the texture of your soil and what are the requirements of your soil, is do I use exclusively sand or do I mix some organic matter in there as well? It depends. If you have extremely sandy soils and they leach out and you could use some organic material, you can mix 50% organic material with 50% sand. For example, brown cow and sand or humic acid and sand 
whatever you need to do with that it is fine if you have good soil textures use exclusively sand the reason being is that organic material is still going to break down there's still decomposition going on and that could potentially lead to some bumpiness in the yard so if you have good soil textures use exclusively sand if we need to enhance those soil textures a little bit mix in a little bit of organic material with your sand and things will go much smoother. Once homeowners top dress their yard, they fail to go back over the top with the fertilizer. So we've just put soil or sand on top of the grass. And what we need to do is encourage some new growth. We want to push some vegetative growth. We want to push some root growth. Use a fertilizer that has high nitrogen and high phosphorus in it. Uh, I'll leave a link here in the description below so that you can pick some up if you want to have it delivered to your door. I'm going to come back over the top. I'm going to do about one pound of nitrogen per thousand and also one to two pounds of phosphorus per thousand. And this grass is going to pop back up in 10 to 14 days. You won't even be able to see the sand. Time for bonus tips and tricks. How much sand do you need to put down at any one given time? You never want to put down more than about a half an inch of sand at any one time. Reason being is you put too much sand on top of the grass, it's not going to be able to penetrate through that sand. So put down a half an inch, let that grass get above that sand. If you need to do it again, put down another half an inch. So you may be asking, well, how much sand do I need for a given area to do a half an inch? So one yard of sand will do about a thousand square feet at a half an inch, give or take. Uh, that might go up to a yard and a half if you work the math out uh, and depending on where you get your sand. So basically how you get sand is you go to the masonry yard, they're going to have a, a backhoe that scoops it and they're going to put it on your trailer. They're going to put it in the back of your truck and it's about a yard. It might be 0.8 yards, it might be 0.12 yards, but it's going to be somewhere around a yard. So it's not an exact science, but if you work the math out, it's going to be about one yard of sand per thousand square feet. You might can go up to 1.5 yards per thousand. And that's going to give you roughly a half inch of sand throughout your yard. Let that grass come up through that sand. If you need to repeat the process, do another half inch until you get the yard where you need it. Guys, as always, thank you for watching The Plant Doctor. And until next time, happy gardening.